Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Pereira. Campaigning for the second phase of the Gujarat Assembly election ended earlier on Tuesday. On the last day of campaigning, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi exchanged barbs and traded charges in their last frantic lap of electioneering in the Prime Minister's home state. Both leaders left no stone unturned to dazzle voters and one-up the rival. While Prime Minister Narendra Modi took a seaplane ride over the Sabarmati River, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi visited the Jagannath Temple and addressed his first press conference as the party's president-elect. Now that electioneering has come to an end in Gujarat, on this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyze if issues or individuals took center stage in the state's polls. Joining me on the program today are Nirja Chaudhary, senior journalist, Syed Zafar, national spokesperson of the BJP, and Tom Vadakan, national spokesperson of the Congress. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. Nirja Chaudhary, I'd like to begin with you, of course. Sir. You know, campaigning has come to an end in the high-stake Gujarat elections. How do you look at the campaign thus far? Uh, it's, it's had a very tortuous kind of path, uh, in the sense that it started off uh, with the Congress seizing the initiative and focusing on the development issues, joblessness, farmer distress, uh, questioning the Gujarat model of uh, Vikas. Also, he brought in, that was a savvy move to do a coalition with the three movement leaders, mm. which is Hardik Patel of the Patidars, Alpesh Thakur of the B B B OBCs, and Jignesh Mavani, who shot to fame after the Una flogging, so the Dalits. Now, they created a certain kind of climate, you know, environment. And uh, uh, so, uh, the BJP was put on the mat. And I traveled for seven days, and I found that in sections, there was unhappiness, there was anti-incumbency, but in section, there was also anger. There were words used like ghamand and manmani and teaching them a lesson this time. So they are chastened and uh, the correctives are put, play, put in place for 2019. Mm -hmm. Though that kind of also I heard from the farmers and the patidas. Now then when Mr. Modi hits the road and uh, the picture changes. You know, even at the, in the early part, people used to say, uh, what is the rabbit he's going to pull out of the hat? Everybody would want to know in the penultimate round because Mr. Modi is known to uh, change the game in the last few days of the campaign. And this time, Narendra Modi stuck to the emotive issues. So whether it was, uh, you know, I'm there for you, if I may have gone to Delhi, but I've not forgotten you, I'll set right all the things, certain programs are already in the pipeline, the Narbada water, I heard him in Rajkot, so that the women said to us the most important thing is water. So he was addressing that. But then the last few days, the last week, the discourse has moved, you know, from Mani Shankar, a year of the Congress, uh, we're talking about Shah Jahan and Aurangzeb and how power took, uh, transition of power took place then. Hmm. Uh, then, of course, he talked about Nietzsche Kisim Kadmi, that, that the PM just got hold of this. It was a handle, he went to town. But the last bit was the most uh, incredible, which is unprecedented, which has not happened before, which the Prime Minister questioned uh, whether Pakistan was interfering in the internal elections of the country in Gujarat. And with the former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, former President, Vice President Hamid Ansari, and many other top bureaucrats who had attended a dinner for Mr. Kasuri, foreign, former Foreign Minister, were part of this conspiracy. So, uh, I mean, uh, he, at rally, a couple of rallies, he made this a point. Now, the Prime Minister has been very scrupulous about and being very politically correct on issues. So, this was the first time that, uh, you know, the rhetoric went in that sure, direction. Sure. Into, so from development to uh, emotional issues to India Park to nationalism, ultranationalism, and taking the former Prime Minister and the former Vice President on at a personal level. Okay. So let me get in uh, Syed Zafar of the BJP into the picture now. Why did the campaigning in this election get so personal? Well... <clears throat> Let's, let, let me give the right perspective. We were, there is a performance for us to back. We have a 22 years of, uh, we have served there. We have been in power for 22 years in Gujarat. And we have done a lot of developmental activities in Gujarat. 
So we, there is a performance for us to back and we, there, you, one can do a back testing and we can discuss about it. Rahul Gandhi started with that, that let's discuss about the developmental model. Gujarat development model, but when he arrived actually in Gujarat, then he realized that the water, the development, whatever he was briefed, that though development has taken place in the state of Gujarat, is was untrue and a lot of development has had actually taken place in Gujarat and all over. He has realized that it's a lot of development in, uh, compared to any other states he has visited. The Gujarat is the most developed state. Then he realized that uh, his own constituency, where he has done nothing in Amethi, then if, if, if he talks about the development and he was, tries to mislead the people of Gujarat, people will definitely ask, ask about Amethi as something which has not, he has not done anything for the people of Amethi, for, this, for his own constituency, for in his own, own bastion. People are very unhappy with his performance. So he dropped the ball of discussing about the development model and Gujarat development model because he knows that he, he will be he will have absolutely no uh, no uh, uh, answer to respond when people will ask about his own bastion of Amethi. Then he decided to talk about uh, 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 GST. Then GST, of course, the GST breathing problem was there, and people understood that there is a breathing problem, and that has been addressed in the as when the, in Guwahati the GST council met. All the concern which has been expressed by the people, not only from Gujarat but elsewhere, that have been addressed. So people uh, in Gujarat are happy with the, uh, the with the GST and the way it has been rolled out and the way their their concerns have been addressed, like in like the people uh, traders from other states. Then they, they decided to insult because they, this also did, did not work for them. They decided to insult the honourable prime minister. They started started using foul language, and that is something which people of Gujarat realise that this is something which they need to be tr truly. Uh, they were upset, people of Gujarat were upset and still very upset with the Congress party, the way they have insulted the Honorable Prime Minister because there is one thing which is very, very important for our, everyone to realize that for uh, B BJP, it is performance, for, for uh, 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 performance and reforms. B BJP and the NDA government is known for reforms while Congress is known for scam. So that is the differentiating factor which everyone realized, with scam versus reform and uh, delinquency versus performance. So we have delivered, we have performed. While uh, Rahul Gandhi has, has huge delinquency issue, the Rahul Gandhi, Congress party has huge uh, scam issue, uh, scams after scam, the, the party is known as the party of fraud and fraudsters, and that is the biggest challenge for them to how to, how to come, up, uh, come over with hmm. that. Because everybody will ask, you know, if you talk you, about you know, you're uh, talking uh, so much development, about development. If you talk about delivery, what you have done is a scam. You know, so, you're talking so much about development and why, no, did, why, no, why, why didn't you so stick, they started in why didn't you Prime stick to it in work. the campaigning? No, finally they... Uh, we, we have stuck to campaigning. But when you are insulting the Honorable Prime Minister, when you are make, giving him names, when you are talking about that he is a niche, I think it is important for the Honorable Prime Minister to also... Uh, 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 take it to the people that okay. how the, he is being uh, insulted, how he is talking, son of the, uh, how he is talking, the Rahul Gandhi is talking, uh, 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 in a very and, and other Congress leaders in a very bad manner about okay, the point of taken. the soil. Because Zafar, people of Gujarat knows that he is the pride of the Gujarat. We, and while we've heard Rahul you patiently, Gandhi is not cannot even be called a son of uh, uh, India. Okay, you're saying it was a tit for tat. We've heard you patiently. Let now let's now get the other side of the view as well. You know, Tom Vadakan. This very personal nature of campaigning in Gujarat that we've seen over the last few weeks, the exchange of barbs that we've seen, what does it all indicate? Well, it clearly indicates desperate measures in desperate times. Today, closing scene was a single engine uh, plane which landed in the water, the seaplane. Point is, from bullet train, to seaplane, uh, the, the, the whole uh, business of tourism being improved. Last day of the election, the Prime Minister endangers himself. I repeat, this is a single engine aircraft. The books of the SPG clearly indicates that no SPG protectee can travel in a single engine plane. He is risking everything he has. 22 years, nothing to show. And when you do 22 years, people are going to ask questions. Questions are being asked by Rahul Gandhiji. 
He has asked questions which hasn't received no answers because obviously there are no answers to it. Scams they talk about, 22 years of what scams have happened in Gujarat will shock not just us sitting in Delhi but even the community of Gujarati community in Ahmedabad and across the state. They talk about water. You ask the farmers the situation about irrigation. You talk about the stress among the agrarian sector. You talk about the anger among Dalits. You talk about unemployment among uh, the youth. And what are they talking about? Every time they put their fingers at us, the point is 22 years and nothing to report. And what do you raise? Rahul ji, are you a Hindu? Are you a Christian? Come clean. My God. I mean, this is so dramatic. But even the Congress is indulged in temple politics. You see, I visit, I visit a mosque, a temple, or a church. None mm. of your business. Mm. I have a belief in a God. I visit them. And nobody has a right to tell me uh, what I am and I have to prove my point. Are you scared? Are you scared but of Rahul me, Ji? Let me, that Tom Tom Tom, no, I, I, I won't you, take this. I won't take this. One at a time. One at a time, please. I'm, I'm coming to you. Sayad Zafar, you can, can, you can respond. No. Okay, one quick, one quick rebuttal and then you can respond no, to what he said. No, you didn't let me do okay, that. Okay. I heard him okay. silently. Okay, okay, okay. One, Sayad Zafar, I'm going to come to you. Let him complete his point and then you can have your say. 40 yeah. ministers camping in Gujarat. Today's evening, uh, late night flights are going to be loaded with ministers. And many of them are parked there. Rahul ji has disturbed their peace. Hmm. And the young man, men of Gujarat, so have you, joined hands. So you're suggesting, you're suggesting that the BJP is concerned? Absolutely. Okay. okay. Let me get in a neutral voice. Now, we've heard what the Congress has said. We've heard what the BJP has said. Mircha, when, when did all this, you know, shift from issues to individuals? You know, this election has been about Prime Minister Modi and Rahul Gandhi now at the end of it. When did the focus shift? You know, when the election started off, it felt that it was said widespread sentiment wanting change confronted with this phenomenon called Narendra Modi. And he was going to stem this. That was the feeling. And the general view all over Gujarat was that Congress will do better, but they, the BJP will make it. That was the traditional conservative wisdom of people you talk to at the end when you ask what is going to happen. Now, with the campaign getting more and more personalized, and as you're saying, I don't know, you know, the whole thing has become, it wasn't uh, BJP versus Congress, because a lot, lot of people who were angry with the BJP used to say, hey, we have no love for the Congress. But uh, uh, today, I think the campaign has become BJP versus <laughs> Congress. It has become <coughs> Narendra Modi versus Rahul. It didn't start off hmm. like that. Now, with the personalized campaigning, <coughs> I don't know at the end of it, where you know where the thing is going to pan out what no only it and we won't we, we may not even get a picture of it or feel of it with the exit polls but because people are very tight-lipped in the exit polls they may give you a completely wrong version of the way they have voted so so we we'll have, have to, to wait for the 18th <laughs> is what you're saying and actually people you talk to have been very closely involved uh, in the campaigning from both sides hmm. they will say Nobody really knows today how sure. it's going. Sure, okay. Sayed Zafar, what's at stake for Prime Minister Narendra Modi as far as the Gujarat polls are concerned? If, as far as Bharati Janta Party is concerned, we fight every election with the same vigor, with the same level of conviction, as, uh, and, and that is what we have demonstrated here. And the uh, uh, Honorable Prime Minister happens to be the senior most karakarta of Bharati Janata Party. He is the senior most leader, the most popular face of India and the most popular face of undoubtedly uh, of, the, of Gujarat. And the, uh, the most uh, uh, adorable leader from Gujarat. I, so he has done, as a, as a karakarta, as a, as a member of Bharati Janata Party, he, he, has, he has discharged his responsibility, he has done his bit. And I, I think uh, everyone is waiting for uh, uh, everyone is waiting for the result to come on 18th, and and we are ab absolutely confident that we will have a thumping major uh, thumping victory this time, and we will surpass our previous record of 127, and this time definitely will go beyond that as well, because the people of Gujarat for two reasons: one, because of our work, because what we have done for last 22 years, there is a performance to back on, and secondly, the way they have insulted the honourable prime minister. Third. 
they they are a, a secret meeting with uh, with the pakistani authorities and a pakistani army officer talking about uh, 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 ahmed ahmed Uh, Patel should become the chief minister of state is something which people will not take it so easily. The good people of Gujarat also knows that Congress party have often, many many times, have uh, compromised with the national interest. Their their first preference is the family and their interest, and national national interest comes secondary to them. And that is why people of Gujarat, after knowing all this, then okay. how they have compromised with the national interest, they will definitely vote, uh, give a befitting reply. to the congress party you know sure. coming back to my question you said that the bjp is going to get over 127 seats in these polls if the bjp does not cross the figure of 127 will the prime minister be blamed for it well i didn't say 127 i said uh, we will improve all our previous number i am all i am saying that we are expecting that it should be 150 plus okay and that that is something which has which has been said very clearly by the honorable party president and it is not the it is not uh, 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 for us to speculate how much seat will come not will come we are confident the senior leadership who understand the uh, poll dynamics very well and and and, and the uh, and the uh, response of the response uh, in the election and i think uh, they are confident that we'll get a thumbing okay. majority and we need not Fair speculate enough. Fair enough. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, we will not. We will not speculate on how many. Who? It is a collective responsibility okay. of the Bharatiya Janata Party, and that. Okay, I think I got my answer there. You said it's going to be no, collective responsibility. Okay, fair enough. Prime Minister, I've yes, I've, I've got my answer. Thank you. I've got my answer. You said that it will be collective responsibility. Tom Badakan is the Prime Minister's image at stake. Well, Prime Minister has its has its his image. There has been a makeover attempt, despite that. Uh, we heard this Pakistani connect in Bihar too. That Pakistanis would be very happy if uh, the other opposition wins. Now there's been this conspiracy theory, and what have you? The ex-prime minister of India, the vice president of India, and voice ambassadors, the uh, former army chief—they're all conspiring against the BJP and trying to get Pakistani help. I mean, when there is such utterances, the speech writers must also take a break. You know, they have they have been overworked. They, there is no narrative. Manmohan Singh ji has asked for an apology, and his track record is there for everybody everybody to see. And this kind of a narrative, I think, there are people who are working against the prime minister in his office. Hmm. This was a narrative which need not have come into public. And that too, two days before the elections. It, I'm sorry to say this. Prime Minister is risking everything. But He goes in a single plane but, engine. But you're suggesting something very serious. You're saying there's someone within the PMO who's jeopardizing. I am suggesting okay. it. If the Prime Minister does not have the sense, I'm sorry. He could have been corrected. But people in PMO, I'm telling you, are working against okay. him. And okay. who are the people? Why are they responsible? This is part of an internal inquiry. PMO must done. Hmm. Can you blame the former Prime Minister? of conspiring can you beat this will the country believe this okay you know the bjp and congress are clearly heated as far as this issue of pakistan is concerned let's leave that aside for the time being and move on and talk about the other big player in the polls nija that is rahul gandhi you know rahul gandhi has got a new position now he is the congress party's president elect is this his first real big test it is going to be his first real big test now hypothetically speak and he has moved you know one number one he was not being rubbish this time which was very interesting for me people were willing to listen to him now that has as much to do with the changing mood of gujarat as to do with his image makeover after his trip to the us of course there's a smarter use of social media and and as i said alliances with the, these three young men uh, and he himself has focused he's not gone away focused on gujarat If he wins Gujarat, his leadership will be established. Hmm. If he gets even eighty to eighty-five seats, but doesn't make it to form government, then also his leadership would. You know, people will look. People from within the party will look at him with new eyes. If he stays, uh, you know, if it's back to sixty, sixty-one, as was the case in two thousand twelve, Rahul. And despite all this effort, then Rahul Gandhi will have. 
problems. From within the party, questions will be asked because he has to win elections next year. Victory in Gujarat is going to impact the morale of the Congress and help them, uh, you know, fight back in Karnataka, in Chhattisgarh, in Madhya Pradesh, in Rajasthan, where they have a good chance and they're pitted directly against the BJP. So, and he'll have to show results. So, but sort of, as I said, standing still is not going to help him. Doing better, yes, it will help him. Victory, of course, will um, we'll make the transition from a Congress president to the leader of the Congress. Okay. Uh, very well summed up there by you. You know, let's now go across to Syed Zafar. You know, Syed Zafar, as far as this election is concerned, do you believe that it's more crucial for the Prime Minister Narendra Modi or more crucial for the Congress president Rahul Gandhi? See, as far as Bharati Janta Party is concerned, it's not crucial for one individual. It is crucial. It's not a family-run business unlike Congress Party. It is within Congress Party, it's one-man army. Here, it's a collective responsibility. It's, uh, there are many people, as uh, Mr. Tom Vardakan was saying, that many ministers are there in Gujarat. means that it's a collective responsibility and everybody put, uh, 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 puts in effort as they are required to put in their effort. So, it is, it is the problem for Congress that they have, they have to be led by only one person from the family. And if he doesn't perform, which, which in all probability will happen, because there you have seen nothing has changed. He has been a vice president of the party and was leading the campaign for last two and a half years since the time he has been elected as a vice president. And you see the result. They have lost uh, 23 election under his uh, leadership. Now he has been elevated without, his, without evaluating his performance. So elevation without... Uh, evaluation and perform uh, promotion without performance is very very evident just because he uh, he comes from the family so then he will have to justify his own existence as a party president if if he does not perform because what is there is nothing to back there is no performance there is no uh, evaluation of his performance he has he has just been elevated purely because he's he is part of the Gandhi Eru Gandhi family so it is for Rahul Gandhi to prove and not the Bharti Jan any leader from the Bharti Janata Party okay Tom Vadakan, I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked Syed Zafar earlier. If the Congress wins Gujarat or does fairly well in Gujarat, we know that the credit is going to go to Rahul Gandhi. But if the Congress doesn't do well in Gujarat, is it going to be collective responsibility there too? Politics is not a one-man army. There are our leaders also in Gujarat. And this is a very strange thing. They talk about Rahul ji and the entire stake is on him. What happens if the Prime Minister gets defeated? You mean the entire uh, cabinet is going to be blamed? And here one man. And as it is without results, we are very confident. Now unless the machines intervene, divine intervention, which, uh, which may happen, there are some prophecies, many people say many things. But we are not making any allegations. Be what it may, today we are doing extremely well. Every every party member Mr. knows Tom, it. Don't and they, start come on ground. now, learn to listen, Mr. Islam. I have been talking. When I've been talking, I'm not. Okay. Uh, I, I don't intervene in what you're saying. Please address the show. Yeah, I'm telling you very clearly. We are confident of winning these elections, unless unless there are some artificial interference. Okay, Quick. I leave it at that. I leave it at that. You know what I'm referring to. Oh okay. my God. The world okay. knows what I'm okay. referring to. Okay, okay. Gentlemen, please let, let uh, Neerja close the show for us with a concluding remark on what implications Gujarat is going to have on 2019. I think, uh, uh, you know, if it is a prime minister's home state and the prime minister has staked his personal prestige, suppose he'd not done this. After all, he's been away three and a half year, years from the state, 22 years of anti-incumbency. He's not supposed to be everywhere winning every panchayat election, every state election. It would be understand, un understandable even if they lost Gujarat. But because he's personally staked everything, his prestige there, it would have a bearing. People will view it as a decline starting. Uh, will it affect his authority? Uh, will it affect his image uh, nationally, internationally? I believe he'll pull out all stops in place for 2019. They will go absolutely all out okay. for 2019. That's, you must not underestimate the combination of Narendra Modi and 
Amit Shah, they are not going to sit on their haunches okay. and wait. Okay, on that note then we'll call it a wrap on this edition of The Big Picture. I'd like to thank all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. That's it from me. See you again next time.